So today I want to talk about a peptide called thymosin alpha-1. And thymosin alpha-1 is a 28 amino acid sequence peptide, and it belongs to a class known as the thymosins. Now, the thymosins function as biologic immune response modifiers. In other words, it helps augment your immune system it helps reduce time and duration severity of illness. Uh, it also increases your lymphocyte count as well. Thymosin alpha-1 was originally identified in, I believe, 1960, 1961-ish. Uh, roughly 1961, the researchers identified it after conducting thymectomies in neonatal animals. And what it alluded them to was that the lymphocyte counts were dropping, the animals were staying much, much sicker, and they had less defense from an immunomodulatory standpoint. This led them to believe that thymosin alpha-1 had pleiotropic immunomodulating and enhancing effects. Unfortunately, the old first-generation thymosins had very short half-lives. It was estimated to be about two hours or so. The modern ones nowadays have been engineered and bound with fusion proteins, thus allowing the half-lives to be much longer. It's roughly about 25-ish hours. Also, the newer ones have a more robust response in terms of CD4, CD8 cell counts, better lymphocytic responses, and they actually last a lot better and they're more stable in serum. So thymosin alpha-1 we've established is an immune modulating or a biologic modifier. So as you get older, you undergo what this process is called thymic involution. Thymic involution is the age-related shrinking of the thymus gland. So what this does is it results in less natural endogenous levels of thymosin alpha-1, uh, less levels of thymosin beta-4, also, it decreases your telomere length of your immune cells, which can reduce the efficacy of the B cells and T cells. Um, also, it can cause a Th1 to Th2 shift, which that has been mm, implicated in autoimmune diseases and intracellular infections or opportunistic infections. Next, I want to talk about the primary mechanism of action of how uh, thymosin alpha-1 works. So it primarily works in terms of immune defense, immune augmentation, through what's called toll-like receptors. Specifically, it works through toll-like receptor 2 and toll-like receptor 9, or TLR2 or TLR9, respectively. So TLR2, toll-like receptor 2, has the capability of recognizing special signatures that foreign microbial pathogens exude. Um, that's also known as PAMP, or we call those signatures PAMPs, or pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Whereas toll-like receptor 2, TLR2s, recognize microbial signatures, or as I said earlier, PAMPs. TLR9, on the other hand, recognizes microbial or viral DNA. And after it recognizes this viral or microbial DNA, it relays this information to T cells of your immune system by having the complete response of recognizing both DNA of foreign pathogens and the signatures exuded by these foreign pathogens, you get a more complete, well-rounded, robust response. So thymosin alpha-1 works to enhance that and make that immunomodulatory response more robust and more diverse. So their studies even show that thymosin alpha-1 can even neutralize the immunosuppressive effects of exogenous corticosteroids. I believe in roughly 2006, thymosin alpha-1 received uh, FDA-approved orphan drug status under the brand name Zidaxin. There are some clinical trials going on to study its efficacy in treating hepatitis B, hepatitis C, non-small cell lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, colon cancer, um, HIV, and some melanomas, uh, just to name a few. Thanks for tuning in and hope you took away some knowledge about this wonderful 
immune enhancing agent. If y'all have any questions or anything, give us a shout. Thank you.